I didn't realise I had a musical ensemble to start, but um, I will say too to Telstra that uh, being that it's your 21st, do not forget to say thanks mum, because that's what I did on my 21st. I'd like to actually start by, and I'm not a big person for, for quotes, uh, I think sometimes they can come off a little bit, uh, a little bit superior or a little bit uh, like you're trying to say something that's not true to you, but this quote really summed up what I wanted to say tonight, and the quote is by Winston Churchill, and Churchill said, a pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity, an optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. And so in this room tonight are people who are inspired by doing things that are difficult. In this room and around the country are people who have overcome what's difficult in order to create what's possible. So who am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about the small business owners in this room who are big on optimism and big on creating success, regardless of the difficulties that we face. If I had to ask you right now, how do you feel about your business? Optimistic, and I think your answer would be, in what we all do, we just have to be. Yet optimistic not all the time, but most of the time. Because if you're optimistic all the time, then I'm pretty sure you don't actually know what's going on or the data that's coming. Our challenges are big. Our day-to-day -day lives are fraught with decisions each and every day that will sustain our business, make it better, or see it fall by the wayside like so many small businesses. And I haven't spoken to many small business owners who've had a free ride, an easy run, who've had it all just work. It certainly didn't all just work for us. And people ask me, what was it like for the early days of Firestarter and Kids Teaching Kids? Well, I tell them it was a monthly proposition. I tell them that I sold my car to start the business. I tell them that in those early years, I went close to bankruptcy twice due to cash flow issues. And I tell them that I borrowed $20,000 in wages during a bad month. I tell them that I woke up every morning sick to the pit of my stomach and every night fell into bed with my head spinning, searching for answers. That's what I tell them. And when they ask me how I got through it, I tell them it wasn't a self-help book, it wasn't the advice from a sagely wise man, and it wasn't, unfortunately, a rich benefactor. Put simply, it was hard work. It was never giving up. Put simply, it was focusing on the opportunities and the problems and how to solve them. Like putting in place the right structures to manage risk, like focusing on cash flow, keeping creditors inside the magic 30 days, like building a six month cash buffer in case it all goes wrong. So where do we get all the energy from to do all this? Well, we were powered by optimism. We were optimistic we could set things right, and we were right. And most importantly of all, we saw opportunity in the difficulty that our environment faces. And that's why I started Kids Teaching Kids. My story is that I was working with a group of grade preps, asking what they needed to survive. And the answers came quickly, Xbox, lollies, PlayStation, even a car, pretty optimistic. I kept asking, what do you need to survive? And they started to get it. Food came first, then water, and even a house or shelter. But they couldn't get the last one, which uh, for those of you playing along at home is, is air. And I kept saying, it's all around you. It's something that you cannot survive without. And one child's hand shot up and he said, is it God? It, it was a Catholic school, so we'll give him that. But then another kid's hand shot up and he said quite tentatively, he said, is it, is it love? And every single female teacher in the room said, oh. But that's a little bit why I started Kids Teaching Kids, for that prep student's answer to that question. It's a little bit about love, and I'll add to that optimism and confidence. And I'll add to that hope as well. It's something that we find warm and fuzzy, something that we talk about from time to time, but it's not something that you read in the data every day on the stock market. It's optimism about finding the opportunities in our environment that's facing major difficulties. 
and I want my first child, and keeping in line with Telstra, last time when we won the Micro Business Award, I announced that I just got married. I have another announcement. My wife is now pregnant and she looks amazing. I'm not allowed to reveal the sex yet. We're, we're still having discussions on that. But um, I want my first child, who's due in November, to be able to breathe the air, to drink the water, to even swim in the River Murray, where I grew up in Mildura, and to keep that sense of wonder about the world in which he or she grows up. And not only that, I want Australia to be a leader in a rapidly changing global economy. That's why it's important our kids are educated in the businesses of tomorrow. We've had 66,000 kids learning about environmental education, learning about alternative energy through our Kids Teaching Kids program. It's in New Zealand, it's in Indonesia, it's in South Korea, and our book has even been translated into Korean for use in their school system. I've turned Firestarter and Kids Teaching Kids into a $2 million annual turnover business. John, I've still got a way to go, obviously. Um, but I'm very proud of that in a space which was assumed only the domain of charities which when I went to my school career counselling office, they said, and I said to them, I wanted to be involved in the environment as a career. They said, you can move wheelie bins around at council or you can plant trees. And uh, I was elected to Melbourne City Council last October, which isn't far wrong, really, but new green businesses each and every day are, are, are popping up. Every week, every day, every hour, in villages and towns and cities around the world. And by 2020, the clean energy industry will, will be worth $2.3 trillion, and opportunity abounds. And while other nations and cities start to move quickly as our economy rapidly evolves, Australia and Melbourne still have a wonderful edge. We have some of the best innovators and leading businesses in the world in Melbourne. Right here in Melbourne, we have global creatures designing King Kong. Right here in Melbourne, we have leading researchers and universities. We have world-class super and financial services. We have logistics. We have niche agricultural produce. We even have a master's student who has increased the solar cell efficiency, efficiency markedly across the globe. So much to be proud of. So much to talk about. So much to look forward to. And that's why optimism, hope, and business confidence aren't just warm and fuzzy emotions. They are what stands between us and a pretty uncertain future. So thanks to Telstra and good luck to all the finalists tonight.